Okay, so in this video, we're going to work out the solution for constructing a DFA that accepts the language L, where L is the set of all strings over 0, 1, such that these strings start with 0, 1 and end with 1, 0. So this is actually a bit of a trickier question than just a substring question. Um, but before we just get into creating the DFA and, and discussing the solution, I just want to look at what are the strings uh, in my language L, right? So first of all, what's the shortest string, right? Well, my strings need to start with 0, 1 and then end with 1, 0. So then my shortest string is probably 0, 1, 1, 0. Well, hopefully you're telling yourself, yes, this is a string in L, but I don't actually need these two ones. Uh, I don't need that many ones in the middle to uh, have my string be in L. So actually the shortest string isn't 0, 1, 1, 0, although it is a string in my language L, the shortest string is 0, 1, 0, okay? Um, and I would say the second shortest string, right, is 0, 1, 1, 0. So this is actually the second shortest string, okay? Uh, what are some other strings? Well, um, let's see here. If I have, let's see, if I have 0, 1, 0, and then a 1, then that's no good because um, I know that I started with 0, 1, but I didn't end with 1, 0. I ended with 0, 1. And the same thing that if I start, let's say, with a 1 um, and then a 1, then it doesn't matter what I have after. This is going to be an immediate reject, right? So these two guys aren't in my language. Um, and then one tricky one that, that's more... Um, well, maybe it's not so difficult to see, but one that you need to be aware of is if you start with a zero, that's okay. But then if, if you have a zero and then a one, that's no good because it's really it really has to be the start of your string that has to have zero one. So this would also not be in your language. Okay, what about strings that are? What are some other strings that could be in this language? Well. Um, I could have any number of ones here, right, in the middle. That would be okay. Um, I could also have 0, 1, 1, 0. And if there is, uh, let's say there's a, a 0 after this, then not all hope is lost, right? There is still some hope that I can recover a 1, 0. If I keep reading, let's say I keep reading, and then at the end I have a 1, 0, then this should also be good, right? As long as I finish with a 1, 0, and I've started with a 0, 1, then I should be okay. So in this kind of, um, in this kind of exercise, the approach that I'll be taking is more of uh, completing the transitions, right? Um, I'm going to start with uh, the bare bones of a machine, so the, the structure that I need my machine to have, and then I'm going to try to complete it. Right, so I'm going to start with the um, so my strategy here. Strategy is going to be one. Uh, it's going to be write down the machine, write down the uh, essential machine. I would say so the essential machine, and the way that I'm going to do this is by saying. Um, it's, it's going to be the machine that accepts the shortest string, right? So machine must, so the machine must accept zero, one, zero, right? This is the shortest string that it can accept, right? So it must be encoded in the machine somewhere in it, zero, one, zero, right? So I can't have any loops um, for, for this shortest string. I can't, because a loop would maybe imply that I can have a, a shorter string than zero one zero. So I really need to focus on this string, right? And then after that, I'm going to see what's missing in terms of transitions. I'm going to see what's missing while using uh, 
edge cases. Because edge cases are always very important to, to think about. So that's going to be my strategy. Okay, so let's go to another page. Um, so first of all, my machine is going to start somewhere. Start going to start in my initial state. Then if it reads zero, one, zero, then for sure it has to accept it, right? So if it reads zero, one, zero, it has to accept that, right? So this is something that I hard code, right? So I hard code the shortest string in my machine. Okay. Okay. What comes next? What comes next? Well, next I need to complete my machine, right? It's a DFA. So for each state, I have to have one and only one transition for each symbol in my alphabet, right? So my alphabet here was zero one. And so each state must have uh, two transitions, one for zero and one for one. So if I start in my start state, right? Um, and instead of reading a zero, I read a one. Well, that's already not good, right? Because remember what I need from my string is I need it to start with a zero and then a one. So if it starts with a one, well, that's an automatic reject, right? So I'm going to create a dead state here to create a reject slash dead state, right? So whatever, whatever happens after that, I don't care. It's going to be an automatic reject, right? The string can try as hard as it wants, but it can never get out of, of this black hole. The same thing happens if I read a zero and then I read another zero because the first two strings, um, the first, sorry, the first two symbols are the ones I care about for my string. So if I read a zero and then another zero, then that's also going to lead my string to be in this black hole where it can't get out of it. Okay. So that completes the transition for um, this section, right? Now it gets trickier here actually. So if I have a zero, one, and a zero, what happens if I sneak in a bunch more ones here? So what happens if I have zero, one, 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 zero, right? Well, it doesn't matter, right? As long as um, at some point I see my last zero, I'm going to accept that guy, right? And so what does that mean in terms of my machine? Where can I put that? Well, I can put that here, right? I can put that transition here, right? So that if I have zero, a bunch of ones, and then zero, well, I'll read my zero, then I'll read a, a, at least one one, right? Because I need, I need to have at least one one. And then I can read as many ones as I want. So long as I have another zero, then that means that I'll have started with zero one and ended with one zero. Okay, great. So that completes that transition. Now we get to the, the trickiest part of this machine, which is what do you do when you're in the final state, right? So if you're in the final state, what does this actually mean, right? So what does it mean to be in the final state in this case, right? And I'm going to give myself some more space because I know I'm going to need it, right? So what does this mean? Well, it means that uh, you definitely started with zero one. So that's a condition that you, you met. Then you saw some strings, right? And then you saw one zero and now you're here, right? So now if there's more strings to come, what you know, right? What you know about your, your string so far is that it started with zero one and it's so far it has a one zero, right? But now if I have, let's say a zero or a one, what can happen, right? So let's say I have zero, one, one, zero, and now I have a one. So if I have a one, right, then my search for, um, for zero, one has to kind of uh, start over, right? Um, sorry, my search for one, zero has to kind of start over, right? Because what I care about, right? So if I read another one, then not all hope is lost because if I, if I read another zero, then I would go back to an accept state. And so what is this intermediate state actually? So that intermediate state is actually this guy, right? Because um, if, I'm in my, if I'm in my final state, right? So I'm in my final state because 
I've just read zero one, and now if I read um, if I read another one, right, then that means that there is some hope for a zero. There is some hope for an accept. So from this final state, you're going to go back to this intermediate state, right? So you're going to go back here. Again, why are you doing this? You're doing this because you've just seen a one. Right, so this is the this is kind of the encoding of the state, right? You've just seen a one, and you're waiting for a zero, because if you wait for a zero and then you get one, that means that uh, you know you had some ones, and then finally there's a zero. So you know that uh, your string started with zero one at some point, right? Because you're there, because you're you're already here, right? So this implies that you started with zero one. And so um, if, you, if you're at this state, this kind of intermediate state where you're, you're seeing ones, once you finally see a zero, then you can go to an accept, right? Then if you see a one again, then that just means that you start your search over for a zero, right? So you start your search over for a zero here, okay? So that's what this transition is for. Um, that's what this transition is for. And this state is encoding this kind of idea. You've just seen a one, and so you're waiting for a zero because you know that you started with zero. Okay, now what happens if you see a zero? So if you see a zero, it's slightly more complicated. Why? Because your search starts over kind of two strings in advance. Like you have to restart your, your search for not just a zero after one, but for one zero altogether. Because imagine you have zero, one, zero, then you have another zero, right? So the only way that you can win, the only way that you, your string can get, can manage to get in your set, accept state if, is if it sees a one zero, right? So your search for one zero has to start over again, okay? So is the idea then, oh, well, here I was searching for a one zero, right? So is the idea then to go here? Right? Would that be good? Well, I don't think so because if you had a string, if you had a transition here, right? If you sent, or sorry, if you had a transition for a zero here, I meant to say zero even before. If you had a transition, let's just dry it out first, for a zero here, and then you saw another zero, right? Then you would go to a dead state and you couldn't get out. But you don't necessarily want to go to a dead state if you see, let's say, Zero one zero 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 and then one zero, right? You don't wanna you don't wanna um, forget or or lose hope in that possibility, right? So that would not be a possibility, okay? In fact, it doesn't seem like any of the states so far encode this idea of um, you're looking for a one and then a zero, right? So what you're actually going to have to do is you're going to have to create a new state. Right? So you're going to create a new state where this state, so this zero here, this state is going to encode another idea, which is, this idea is I've seen zero one at the beginning. Now I know I've seen uh, one zero, so I've seen one zero, um, but I have to start my search again. Start my search. I have to start my search again for one zero. So that's what you're going to do here, right? So now imagine, kind of uh, assume that everything's been taken care of beforehand. So now you're just seeing a bunch of zeros and what you're looking for is one zero. Well, if you're seeing a bunch of zeros, right? Then you're just gonna stay in this state, right? Cause you're still looking for that one and then that zero. But if you see that one, right? If you see that one, then you've just seen a one, and so now you're gonna look for a, a, a zero because what you care about is one zero. And I know what state that is, right? I know what state is just looking for a zero because it's just seen a one. That's this state here. And that's how they connect, right? That's how they connect. So from this state here, I'm gonna create a, transi a transition back to this intermediate state that's looking or searching for um, a zero because it's just seen a one. 
And this whole machine, right, this whole machine would be the machine M such that the language accepted by M is L. Okay, and that's how you would work out the solution to this question.